Terraria is most definitely a game of risk versus reward. You see, throughout your playthrough, you'll encounter numerous scenarios and where the most powerful option is only obtainable when pushing yourself beyond expectations. For example, you can get some of the best weapons in the game straight after entering hard mode, assuming you're able to defeat Duke Fisher on early. Or you can challenge yourself to defeat the Empress of Light in its enraged state to be awarded with one of the best summons in the game. Today, we're going to be looking at another example of this scenario, which this time presents the challenge after obtaining it instead of during the search. Of course, I'm talking about the Sand Gun. The Sand Gun is quite possibly one of the most fascinating weapons in the whole game. But before we delve into it, we're actually getting incredibly close to the big 100k. So if you enjoy watching my videos, it'd be awesome to have you along for the ride. Alright, let's see how you get this thing. Despite the Sand Gun's immense power, it can actually be obtained right from the start of the game with little effort. First requiring you to gather 10 antlion mandibles from your desert, which are commonly dropped from antlions and a range of enemies in your underground desert. Although it might take a bit longer, I'd recommend farming for them on your surface as it's much safer. You'll also need to gather 5 Turpaz, which is one of the more common gems found within the underground and cavern layers. A Spelunker potion should make this a lot easier. And finally, you'll need to buy some illegal gun parts from your arms dealer, which go for 20 gold each. With all of this in hand, you should be able to craft your sand gun, which is bizarrely one of the only weapons in the game to use a furnace as its crafting station. Alright then, let's take a look at what it can do. As you'd expect, the sand gun uses sand as ammunition. When fired, the projectiles are affected by gravity and will turn into an actual sand block when striking a surface. The type of sand used does actually have an impact too. By using pearl sand, ebon sand or crim sand, the projectiles will infinitely pierce, significantly improving its performance. For a pre-boss weapon, the sand gun actually outperforms the Phoenix Blaster in base damage, but its sluggish fire rate causes it to fall slightly behind the DPS test. Still quite insane considering the Phoenix Blaster is a late pre-hard mode weapon. Now of course, I think it's about time we address the massive elephant in the room, which is the absolute mess it can cause. The sand gun will not only slowly make your world look terrible, but will hinder your movement and block yourself in tight spaces. But I suppose there are some positives to this functionality too. Shooting the gun downwards will rise the player up and can be a handy way to reach the space biome quickly. You can also exploit the ammo reservation buff to grant yourself infinite sand farming. With just the ammo reservation portion alone, you'll fire out 20% more sand than you spend. Okay then. With the sand issue addressed, let's take a look at how ridiculously powerful this thing is. Its infinite piercing can flatten any group of pre-ad mode enemies and with the right damage setup, sometimes in one shot. But it's no surprise this has no trouble dealing with regular old enemies. So what about bosses? Well, if you decide to get this thing early, you can pretty much just bullet through the entirety of pre-hard mode. The sand gun has no difficulty taking out the Eye of Cthulhu, dealing high damage and being easy to aim. You'll also have no problem taking out Skeletron and, well, any boss in between. So now for the ultimate test. For being obtainable in the first few nights of playing, there is no way it can take out the Wall of Flesh, right? Well, hilariously, the sand gun is one of the absolute best weapons against this boss. The piercing means you can go right through the hungry and deal damage to the eye straight away. And despite the projectile drop off, even from long distances, I had no trouble keeping it on target. And I'd say at a similar speed to the Phoenix Blaster, the wall of flesh is down. So going back to what I said at the start of the video, you have to consider the risk versus reward factor when it comes to this weapon. If you don't care about your world being littered in sand and blocking yourself in small spaces, this really is the ultimate pre-hard mode weapon. But for me and many, I still don't think the damage is quite worth it, and I'd rather keep my world looking clean. I even had to create another world to make parts of this video. If you're truly not bothered about this though, absolutely give it a go. And the best part is, its crafting recipe isn't even that difficult and can be tried out without losing too much time. What do you think? If you've used the sand gun, I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Thanks for watching. For more Terraria content like this, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.